everyone, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrett. And this is the last taping before February. It, you know, time always, always moves goes. forward. So that's encouraging. Um, there is going to be snow this weekend if you're watching or at home on Facebook or on the TV show on the actual TV. Um, Saturday, eight to nine inches. What? Yeah, there's going to be like, <laughs> I think it starts late Friday night and it's just like constant through the day. You know, half an uh, inch, an inch. It just keeps, I really I, actually hate I it. love those I days. love it except for the shoveling because you're like, yeah, well, it's a lot. So I guess you I'd have rather to go in and out. Yeah, you constantly are like, didn't we shovel that already? I think we shoveled that. Already. Yeah, but I love it because it's, it's pretty. It becomes, it's, it's pretty, and it also there's just this. It's cathartic. It's just it's relaxing. If you let it, if you let it. Sense. Um, we have to go to Wyndham for. Oh yeah, do we? <laughs> So, did you see? I mean, I know someone had told me, and then I finally went to look at what happened to my Senate district. I told, I knew this. And you were going along. I'm like, she's a bl she she didn't hear me. You were and, either in Flor. I think you were either at your parents or in Florida, and yeah, you, it and, didn't click. And just for folks back home, so District 20 has now literally been changed, where it was a balance, a healthy balance between Manchester and Goffstown. Mm -hmm. So more blue, more red. Yep. Um, but you know, okay, let's let's you know have that battle. And the only reason Lou was still winning Goffstown is because he's Lou. Uh, yeah, he's and been, he's been around forever. Right. And um, and they took Goffstown away. Mm -hmm. I like yep. to think they took it away no, because they knew this time well, was the time. I was a p little perturbed when I saw it. So they, they and so they away. took Goffstown yeah. away. They gave that to Hooksett. So that actually becomes a pretty a better, strong right. that that does uh, Republican exactly. area. So I get it. Uh, but then we get all, I get now all of Manchester. So no, it's not all of Manchester. It's, it's no, it's not it's, all. There's one ward that it is. Oh, unless it's, it's changed. It's Ward 12. Uh, it's the whole West Side. This is the way I saw it. Maybe it's changed since then. Because the whole, all of Manchester, I think, would be too big. What I had li seen last was, we are, you already have 10 and 11. Right. You pick up 12, 12. which is a Republican-leaning district. So there is that plus. You already have three and four. And I think you pick up two and five. Yeah, I think maybe that's Yes, it. Yeah. which makes, so it's like you pick up two more on the east side and one more on the west side. And then what happens is now everything, it's just confusing. Yeah, so nothing's anyway. Firm, nothing's actually. It hasn't been voted on but yet, it, but, it, it, uh, it, but yeah. you know, it, it does sound, um, you know, like, I mean, there's, like it's going to be From a political perspective, stretch. there's pros and cons to both. If I really want to be step away from it being my neighborhoods and stuff um yeah so, so anyway so it, it so that's control. sort of the reality i think i'm gonna have to regroup a little and kind of yep. figure out what makes strategic sense there yep. uh you know so so we'll see hmm. w what's gonna hmm. happen on there the, may be all kinds of exciting on and interesting the political approaches. note um Victoria Sullivan signed up to run for Ward 9 Alderman, which is the seat that was vacated when um, Representative and Alderman Barbara Shaw passed away recently. Um, she's running, and Jim Burkish, who um, was the former police, or no, I take it back, former Manchester fire chief. Because anybody who's lived in Manchester for a long time will know that the Burkish name means you work for the government. Because that, I think, was the impetus for some nepotism things in the city. Because literally every Burkish that existed all seemed to work for the city. Which wow. just seemed highly unusual. But um, he was the fire chief and then retired, I think, in 2019. So he, make, he takes home about $144,000 a year from his pension. And then he went and he became the part-time fire chief in Hooksit, where he brings home another $100,000. And I'm not begrudging anybody for making money, but from what I can tell, the only thing Jim Burkish has ever done is work for government. And the last thing Manchester needs well, not is another advocate for city employees and growing government. We need advocates for the people who reside and pay taxes in Manchester. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so anyway, is there that election, is that election? That special election is on March 15th. It's okay. a winner takes all. Like, it, if, even oh, if there's just... It's the whoever wins. Okay. Um, and that's Ward 9. Ward 9. And what reason made me think of it is the ward lines in Ward 9 change. Because the aldermen, I'm going to... This is where I feel like we were a little misled. So a few years back, there was a um, charter amendment to allow 
the city clerk or whoever without the voters approval to change the ward lines because literally ward six did not have a polling location I remember they were actually this, voting yeah. in ward eight and there was no way to fix it so the city clerk literally needed to just move the ward line like this so that the school was now in the right ward and that to me is that shouldn't have to go before the voters right that's a need what the aldermen did this year is they just changed ward lines. <laughs> None of these were based on... You can't give these guys an inch. Well, and I'm like, so like in Ward 9, the whole Ken Burma neighborhood, which is what runs... Um, when you turn up the hill off of Brown Ave near mm. like the McDonald's, that whole neighborhood, not the lower neighborhood, but the upper neighborhood, I guess probably the lower, that's all now part of Ward 8. And, and Ward 9 has picked up from Ward 7 and Ward 3. And it's all just, why? Like, we took 500 voters from this neighborhood and put them over. So now what is weird for a special election is there's a whole chunk of people who have no, probably don't have any idea what we're there. Yeah, that's probably why. So there'll be people who will show up from the Ken Burma neighborhood to vote for Victoria, and they won't be able to. And there'll be a bunch of people who live, thought they lived in Ward 3 who won't even know that they needed to vote. Yeah, so, uh, so we're, we'll get the word out. Yeah. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this at home, please remember and mark um, your calendar. And March I think you can find uh, Victoria I find her by looking up her old website, which was Victoria Sullivan for Mayor, which now points to a new website. And But I think it's victoriaformanchester.com, but don't quote me on that. And um, you can sign up for information there. You can sign up to donate. Um, really important that we get an advocate for the people who actually understands what's happening on the streets and whatnot. You know, I will tell you, after we had coffee last <laughs> week, I was, uh, you know, after our producer told us, oh, the attack yeah. against Andy was actually right downstairs, yeah. and Temi and I always go to bank for coffee, and I was walking back, and it was super windy, yeah. and, um, you know, I heard these guys behind me, and they were, you know, Something that, yeah. You know, I mean, I think the guy, I mean, he was, he sounded like he was in meth psychosis. I mean, it was like alarming enough so that I actually felt scared enough that I stepped into a vestibule so to that let they him could pass. pass. Jeez. And there were three guys. And the third guy who was carrying most of the stuff, I think he understood, like we made eye contact and I think he actually understood she's scared of us, you know, and he kind of, you know, looked away yep. and, and uh, there was some inner reflection there which is what you need mm -hmm. in order to get better. Yep. You know, the, the horrible thing too is everyone's addicted to really trashy drugs yeah. now. Like meth is an awful drug. Yep. It really is. And it makes you paranoid and aggressive oh, and, and all these the things. skin and the teeth so, and all. So, so they walked by and I kind of came back out and then the two in the front kind of saw cigarette butts in the snow, so they were going to collect the cigarette butts. So I had to go by again, and I had a pile of newspapers from the from the um, show. And of course, the wind like came up, and so the the newspaper dropped, and then they like all pounced on the. <laughs> it was very yeah, was, like, what world do I live? In, right? It was just strange, you know. I've I grew up in an incredibly violent country mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of crime. Yep. It's not something you know, and I've been. And I've traveled a lot and, yep. and you know, I've been robbed, yep. I've been burgled, you know, yep. like all of it. And I, I just, I don't it's... want to see this here. And I forget if I told you, but Boston, we went to see uh, the Van Gogh thing, the Van Gogh thing, and they had moved it from one location to another. And so we, um, we were at the wrong place and we were kind of hustling to get in for our window. And so we left the one warehouse and, you know, it's in a huge space, so it's very specific where it could be. So we ended up driving through a neighborhood where I wouldn't ordinarily be. Mm. It was down at the port somewhere. There was a tent city as far as the eye could see. I was sitting at a traffic light and I look over and it's those docks where the trucks come back yeah. in. So they're kind of raised and then there's yeah. the, um, the, door the doors yep, and everything. Yep. And there is a kid, he's probably 20 sitting with his backpack, shooting up, like just like, like I'm like, in my like, car right. at the traffic light. He's like, you know, 40 feet away, uh, sitting there and then just like nodding off. And I was like- It's just not okay. Like, it's just not okay. It's not okay. And the thing is that the healing has to come from people's 
desire to get better. And the way to do that is you have to have a purpose in life. Yep. Like this this mentality of victimhood, oh. that is just, it's it's a sickness. And we have to surpass that in order for us to heal I'm gonna try to, ourselves. I'm going to try to remember to go back and watch it. Um, of all people, Bill Maher, who most people would think has very far to the left, um, had I watched a podcast or a show or whatever it was the other day, and he was talking about victimhood. I forget who he had on the show with him, but he was he said, here are like 10 words that I think we need to stop using because they're wrong, because it talked a lot about victimhood. You know, everybody thinks everybody thinks they're a victim. Yeah. Like if somebody looks at you wrong, they're a victim. If somebody calls you by the wrong name, they're the victim. The whole pronoun, that's all victim. That's all victim mentality. And the more you do it, the more people become victims. And then if there's a victim, there must be an aggressor. And then everything becomes all out of whack. Well, that, and also, I mean, that is sort of how the neo-Marxists are trying mm -hmm. to, to, to infiltrate yep. and to spread these ideas, right? Is, well, then everything becomes a power structure. Everything becomes, you're a victim and there's an aggressor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but ask yourself, who is the aggressor? Well, I mean, it is always actually ends up being the state. Well, it's the same person that wants to be the hero. So interesting that you say that because this is where my brain went this morning. Um, John DePietro made a post um, and he was talking about Marxism and he was saying how, you know, like what we're seeing in so many ways is exactly the way um, a Marxist regime comes about. Because if you break down everything that's normal, which means you break the children and you break the education system and you break the food chain and you break this and you break work and you break the relationship between people and their doctors and you break all these things. The only solution then is a totalitarian government that's going to come in and make it better. Right. And it's sort of that is what Fauci has become, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I think we should all start just wearing lab coats, right? Dan wants to get a little it, ribbon that for any all of us who've he goes, maybe we should all start wearing white ribbons. I survived that. I said I already I survived COVID so that like maybe people would see that. Like, wait, half the people you see every day already had COVID and survived right. because yeah, not actually, everybody that's... dies. Just like mm -hmm. I had a thought the other day. I, I go through the obituaries to see if anybody, you know, anybody's parents died or whatever. And some days I find myself going, holy cow, people are dying at like 68 and 72. And then one day I had to remind my brain, well, yeah, you're only reading about the dead ones. I'm not reading about the 80 year olds that are all still alive. Right. Like, right. You, if you keep read, if you keep focusing on one aspect that you start to believe that that's the only aspect. It's, it's bananas it, to me having seen so much censorship and really trying to I really genuinely do try and see both sides. I try to at least issue. be objective. And I like to be like, okay, you know, really what is it? What is what's going on, right? So but from the start, I mean the science was like, oh, the masks don't actually work. Right. I mean, Tammy and I've been yep. saying that since day right. one. And of course now, two two years later, two yeah, two years later. Are we in yes, year we're, three or we're, well we're we're, well, we're, we're about starting to go the third in April, year, yes. right? Yes. And, and uh, you know, of course, now the CDC is coming out and saying, saying well, 95 masks actually, are the only ones. You know, and they don't even work that well no. either because they have to be, be professionally fitted. Yeah. fitted in order for it to actually work. So, of course, all these things are coming out two or three years after the time. But I'm like, well, maybe people should start listening to the people who are right from the start. And I will say this because, you know, this in today's paper, in the Your Health section, <laughs> they have a physical activity, CDC, a quarter of US adults are not active enough. And I'm like, yeah, That's we nice. know that. Why for two and a half years was no one saying, get healthy, you have metabolic yep. disease, you're eating the wrong crap, stop eating cereal that has like 13 teaspoons of sugar in it. Um, you know, like all of that. So now I would, you know, encourage folks back home, especially the people, now you gotta do everything else the CDC recommends, which means you should be drinking a lot less alcohol yep. than you probably do drink. I yep. think you're allowed to drink two glasses of wine a week. A week? That's what the CDC says. So I'll I mean, tell you, don't quote me I'll tell on you that, this. It's, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, if, you go, if you get COVID, and, the whole time we had COVID and then probably for weeks after, 
neither of us had a single desire to have anything. It was just funny. We were like, huh, oh, interesting. Huh, yeah, like yeah. not. Huh. Yeah. So um, there is actually a bill that's coming up. I think we've talked for more than five minutes, right? Because apparently uh, the the YouTube AI checks the first five minutes to see what we're talking to about. To see what you're talking oh, about. Uh, the so, weather in so, Manchester. So how crazy is this, right? That I'm not allowed to say the name of a medicine that there are worldwide mm -hmm. studies that prove yep. unequivocally that it works. So that medicine, which name I shall not say. It begins with a vowel. <laughs> it starts with a vowel and, and it's, it's with followed a with a B. B. And then it can be figured <laughs> out from there. So anyway, there is a bill that is being introduced, I believe today or this week, yep. uh, that would make that just over the counter uh, without a prescription. And I think the thinking there is something that I found extremely troubling over the last couple of years is this, the, that, that there's always been a relationship, a direct relationship between uh, your person and your doctor. Mm -hmm. There's arguably one between your person and your lawyer, right? You have a privilege mm -hmm. here. You have, you know, the Hippocratic mm -hmm. Oath and, and your privacy, patient, and, privacy and all of that. And what the government managed to do, and I think not on accident, on purpose, is insert themselves in between all those relationships. And, you know, we could add the church here. Yep. We could add, you know, your social club there, yep. whatever the spokes are. And, um, and they banned... Right. medicine that doctors that you could prescribe that that scientifically worked and shows it's working um you know there's a huge study that just came out of brazil it's uh it's done scientifically you know so actually like following all the protocols that you would expect to see in a scientific uh study yep. uh including i guess double blind mm. and all of that right and it's 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 very clear it does work. Yep. I know it worked for me. I know it worked for yep. my family. I'm, I mean, you know, it, so if it, whether it worked or not, I don't know. But I got better and it didn't harm me. So why can't I have it? Well, I'll tell I mean, you, you can, why. Because it costs I, three cents and the vaccine well, I mean, that and, is being mandated to, be honest, to make probably, Fauci you rich. You probably have more of a chance of um, causing your, your body harm with... Um, too much Tylenol, too much, you know, too many of things that everybody takes regularly. Oh, yeah. You can harm I mean, yourself with those, but those are okay. Well, just the thing is, I mean, the entire world is like, I know. you know, it's it's just, it's so out of whack, So that's guys. a very good bill coming so up this a, week. That's a really um, good bill. In, com in the committee. And then the other one I thought that sounded kind of cool that was interesting to me is a lot of the bureaucrats. So these are not our elected officials. And of course, that's also something we saw, right? So we had these unelected bureaucrats who are suddenly like making <laughs> law and demanding, yeah. like <coughs> taking away all your civil rights. Here in New Hampshire, the, our administrative rules are off the charts. I guess um, I was talking to Melissa Blasek, yep. who's a state rep up at the state house, and she said, she had followed up to find out how many uh, how many administrative a rules lot. there are. There's a lot. And they were like, yeah, we can't even answer that question. Yeah. They think millions upon millions, yeah. right? And you're like, man, what is all of that? Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, everyone's breaking something, right? But don't, don't admin, I don't know this for a fact. I'm just saying, don't administrative rules have to go through JELCAR, which is elected officials? So um, I'm, I'm not sure. So of that. I don't think so. So okay. so there is a bill that's being proposed that would add it so that every administrative rule has to be added at least to the cons consent calendar. Fair. So that you know it's like oh someone's getting eyeballs on this if right. they're just gonna I don't know write I mean I forget right. if the hydrochloroquine ban in New Hampshire was was that right. a executive right. order or how that worked. But it wasn't democratic, yep. whatever it was. So, well, I um, mean, and people sometimes, don't, I think it's easier for, uh, I'm gonna back up. When I was um, an elected state rep, the very first dilemma, if, per, if I wanna use that word, that I um, started to notice right away was I had to decide what my, um, what my line of demarcation was. Like there has to, be, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of reps who don't. I'm sure there's a lot of reps who just go up there and flit around and don't, and they just vote how Mary votes or they vote how Pete says, about, you know, and there's something to be said about following Pete or Mary because you're depending on them to have done the research in their specific genre or whatever. But what I did have to decide, like there's gotta be some very basic principles 
Um, and the first one that was very easy, I thought, is you just just ask yourself, is this an appropriate role of government? Like, is this something <laughs> that government needs to do, right? And that's usually no! a guy. <laughs> so if you start with that, then if it is something that maybe the government should be involved in, who should decide at what level? And that's where your elected officials should be making these decisions because they are representing you. And But then... If there's other entities, and I mean, at the federal government, look what OSHA wanted to do. OSHA right. wanted to say, you can't, you know, you <laughs> can't have a job unless you do this. And it's like, wait, I don't really think that's how this works. And luckily, the United States Supreme Court seems to be agreeing that. I mean, I don't know how you could logically say that a federal <laughs> agency that's supposed to regulate what you're doing when you're at work can tell you to put something in your yeah. body that's permanently no. there. Those two things are just mutually um, exclusive. Anyways, I don't want to interrupt. Yes. So uh, this is a state house piece, which will transition into my <laughs> horrifying things from this morning. Um, there was this, this meme going around Facebook. It wasn't a meme. It's just a screenshot from New Hampshire Journal. Um, and it says one of the of new NH, hashtag NH politics most outspoken school choice opponents, and I believe this is oh Marjorie Smith, Mary Jane Waller. I don't know. Anyways, so I should tell she has a mask on. In the yeah, photo. I mean, and I could have looked it up, but it's irrelevant. Um, she po says she pulled. This is while she was testifying on the House floor. She was speaking on the House floor. Pulled. She says she pulled her son out of public school to attend a private academy because. He was experiencing difficulties. She opposes education freedom accounts that let poor families do exactly the same thing. The, Seriously, you can't make some of this up. So you've got people who are, I mean, this is the problem. You're either, for, I say it all the time, you're either for the kids and their education or you're not. The best education possible needs to happen, period. Quality education, adequate education. And what do we know? Competition makes everyone better. So um. <sighs> so on the school thing, you didn't see this. So I this bubbled up in my news feed, you know, in my feed. And this is there's a whole story. But I want to read this. This is from the Manchester School District policy. So this was voted on by the Manchester um, Board of Educa or Education, you know, all our school, school board members. Board. And Joyce Craig's the head of that. Under guidance, section, section three guidance, a privacy. The board recognizes a student's right to keep private one's transgender status or gender non-conforming presentation at school. Information about a student's transgender status, legal name, or gender assigned at birth also may constitute confidential information. School personnel should not disclose information that may reveal a student's transgender status or gender nonconforming presentation to others. If this stopped there, I'd be like, well, okay. Including parents. What? So the woman who wrote this said her 12-year-old daughter, who's a seventh grade student, um, decided to change her name in school. So maybe her name was Mary and she would like to be called Pete. And she would like to use the boy's bathroom. And she's going to just be a boy while she's in school. And the policy of the Manchester School District is literally not to even inform the parent that their young child is having perhaps identity issues. Because, I don't know, what about the 13-year-old? What if your 13-year-old son, Ricky, decides to go to school and become Pam and is now going to use the girls' locker room and the girls' bathroom. As a parent, are you not concerned why your 13-year-old male child is now spending time in the girls' locker room and the girls' bathroom? And you are literally, based on their... You are literally not allowed to know. They will not tell you. So, so, who, so, so who's raising take, the let's, children? But let's take let's take the whole gender well, issue that just out of to it, be, right? Right. Let's just say it was uh, your kids at school are doing. I mean, I'm I'm not going to think of a good example off the top of my head right now, but just something different. And you ended with including not telling the parents. Let's say kid got beat up in school. Right. And it's like, no, no they no. have a right to privacy at school. Now, we know that there's a lot of people. I mean, Twitter is just filled 
with crazy <coughs> bureaucrats constantly saying they own your children. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, that's certainly how a lot of people think. But, you know, to be fair also, I mean, I think that policy is entirely <laughs> wrong. But if you're a parent yep. and your child is doing that and you have no clue, you may also well, want to be having a better or open dialogue well, and with I think your I'm kid. Look, I'm thinking about, um, so my, my, I have an older brother who, when his daughter was in school, um, they didn't realize it right away, but like she had emotional disorders. She would like, you know, they send you home with the, the candy bars to sell and she literally would squirrel, squirreled dozens and dozens and like all the money had to come from somewhere in a closet and she'd just go in there and sit there and eat them because she had, th that's not just, oh, I'm hungry for chocolate. Mm -hmm. That is something wrong. So I'm thinking, I'm imagining the scenario where your son or your daughter isn't doing this outside of school Right, and so you have no reason. But once they go into school, if they're doing it just in school, that's not because they actually have an, a gender issue necessarily, but they're probably looking for attention or conforming to f peer pressure and things like I that. Mean, it could and be those all are, of those things. But, but then why would we? Why would we want the school district to specifically say? We're not going to inform the parents. No, I think that under no circumstances should there and what ever be a written policy that's like, we're not going to tell the parents. And how I don't many, think the school has the authority. How many other things are we on... not telling our, the, uh, the parents? Well, I mean, I mean Victoria <laughs> based hasn't... on the fact that we're not teaching CRT in the yeah. schools, except, uh, you know, well, I've Well, I mean, and that's how Victoria got, got her start. She found out that they were teaching um, a very explicit health class to her, like, very young child without the parents knowing and she actually that was her impetus to go get elected and make so, a law that says you have to let the parents opt out of these things so i would suggest you know what to the extent you can follow the the um the example set by that democrat and withdraw yeah. your children from I the can't public imagine schools, saying in the public schools uh use an education freedom yep. account uh the money will follow the child yep. let's create more competition yep. so that everything starts to get better this is how we heal yep. things yep that's a good start right Right? Yeah. So snow this weekend and um, then we'll be in February. So like it's practically beach weather. <laughs> <laughs> I can start planting next week, right? <laughs> Not, <quite>. Not really. <laughs> uh, but any seriously, say, stay safe on Saturday. Uh, you know, watch the roads. Apparently people no longer know how to drive in the winter weather up here in New Hampshire. Um, so many accidents. Yeah. Uh, be safe and we will see you next week. Bye. Take care.